Welcome to Friday's watercolor workshop. So nice of you all to join us. My name is Lorraine Moffa, the programming coordinator for Loudoun County Public Library and your host today. Feel free to type in the chat box any questions or comments you may have, and I'll be happy to answer them myself or relay them to the artist. It is my pleasure to introduce our artist, Miga Mera. She's an award-winning artist. She paints watercolors in a realistic way, and she's a wonderful teacher and has been doing these programs with us for the last two years. So today it looks like we're going to paint some very colorful umbrellas, which is a very apropos image <laughs> to today's weather, isn't it? <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Lauren. Thank you for the introduction. And yes, yeah. happy rainy day. Uh, what perfect way. Again, last time when we painted, it was snowing. It was the uh, penguins. And today we are doing umbrellas as it's raining outside. So I guess we're keeping up with the weather very well, which is great. <laughs> and the theme and everything. So I know it's been so gloomy the last two days, but hey, I hope these colorful umbrellas bring some joy uh, instead of those boring black umbrellas. So that's what we're going to paint uh, today, guys. Uh, and I know everybody is a little jumbled up with the image. It looks like, oh, there's so much to draw. But I'll show you how you can simplify to draw this. Although I finished the drawing completely, I'll explain how much of drawing to do. And then I'll explain the colors and everything, and then we'll get started. So to begin with, I want you to see you see see this black and white image, and you can see that here there's no color and there's lots of color here. And how are we going to approach this painting? Well, the easiest way to do or to draw or get started with the drawing is just draw these one, two, three big umbrellas. The reason being, you can always add these small umbrellas here and you know later and not get confused. So right now, when you start drawing, just draw these one, two, three umbrellas so that you don't get completely confused with the other shapes. And like I said, just get the shapes outlined. And even if you don't draw these interior uh, metal strings, it's gonna be fine. But at least get these three drawings here and I'll explain the colors when we get started, how light, how dark to go and how you can really give these umbrellas this realistic feeling of light and dark and, you know, dangling in the air. So I'll explain about that soon. So for now, just get set, get started with the drawing. Uh, just forget about these middle layers of umbrellas. Just draw these three and then we can go forward with this and the colors, you know what, feel free to pick out your own colors. I'm going to choose the one that's on the um, reference picture, but you can make any color that you like. Okay, so get started with the drawing and I'll give you about 10 minutes to draw. So any questions, let me or Lauren know and I'll help you out. In the meanwhile, people who have already drawn uh, the image, they can just gather their paints. Lots of beautiful colors here. I definitely see Lots of rose, pink, reds, oranges, greens, blues, some browns, um, purples. So very, very vibrant. And like I said, colorful umbrellas can really change the mood from a gloomy day to a happy day. So let's try that. And you don't have to go very detailed. It's like how I drew it. I should have skipped that part, but I've drawn it anyways. So 
with this much rain, it almost feels like spring, I guess. Maybe it's early spring. I don't know. I like that idea, Amiga. <laughs> yeah. Spring, <laughs> spring coming. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no complaints. <laughs> you all here with us today. If, if anyone had trouble signing on, there have been some problems with WebEx today. Please do let me know in the chat box. Okay, in five more minutes, or maybe less than five more minutes, and then we'll get started. Uh, while you're waiting, uh, I would suggest to observe your reference photographs and see how the colors are laid one upon each other, and yet they look so transparent. Now, to get this real effect of transparency, you need to apply lots and lots of layers of thin paint. I will show you how to do that, but in some places, we're going to do a little bit of shortcut by applying a little thicker paint than waiting for each layer to dry and apply um, the thin paint because it's just going to take a lot of time. But I'll show you the concept of how this transparency is achieved with thin layers of good paint. And it does take time. And even though the, the picture looks so simple, it just looks like simple colors, just go deeper. There's so many layers of paint underneath. And even though it doesn't seem like there is real, there's the yellow there, there is some yellow. That's what gives it the warmth, especially the, the, the pink and the orange or the red umbrellas. They have some warmth underneath. And that warmth is coming through some warm colors like yellow or red or orange. Usually simple things are harder to paint 
because then you have to really make them perfect. But um, they're the ones more exciting, I feel, because like their simplicity is just so amazing when it comes to painting. You just enjoy the purity of colors and the design. So one more minute, guys, and then we'll get started. And if you haven't drawn all the umbrellas, it's okay. We'll start with whatever you have drawn and then continue, build up on it. I know it was a bit of a complex uh, design, but I, I was just so fascinated. Like, I don't remember when was the last time, you know, anybody has painted like a group of umbrellas. And I thought it would be very different than painting just animals or birds or things like that. And yeah, it's perfect for today. Okay. All right. So let's get started with how we're going to approach this painting. As you can see, there are so many umbrellas and sometimes with colors, they can be very distracting. As usual, go for your black and white picture and see how dark or how light each umbrella is. If you see here, there are two blue umbrellas, but they don't have the same saturation, the amount of intensity of paint that it has or the values you can see. This is lighter and this is really dark. And the same with pink umbrellas. They're not the same. This is a lighter umbrella than this. And then if you compare these two umbrellas, this is darker than this. So when you're planning your painting, you have to be very careful how dark or how light it should go. Definitely start with a lighter paint. Always be feel, feel free to add more color. But you have to decide the lightest one first. If you see, this is really light. These corner ones, the orange yellow ones, and then this one, and then this one, and so on and so forth. But you know which are the two really dark umbrellas, this blue and this green. So when we put a lot of paint, we got to be very careful that these two get the maximum amount of thick paint or the amount of paint when they're applied. That's what is going to make this painting very bold and real. Same way, this has to be lighter. You know why? Because you're pushing this behind. This umbrella is behind these two umbrellas. So that's very important. One more thing to observe here. This is darker and you can see this is in front. Okay, so this is how you analyze the painting or a reference photograph and you want to get started. Uh, it just makes it easy to plan your paints and your colors. So we'll get started. I think I'll get started with this one, the one on the top left, the pink one. And you can see what colors you have. I'm going to take some opera rose, some maybe a bit of red, uh, leave the uh, handle of the umbrella as it is, and then because we're going to apply a lot of layers of paint, I'm going to come back and forth to each of the umbrellas uh, so that I can paint dark paint on them. Okay, so just stay with me and I'll try to go as slow as possible so that everybody can catch up, but I'll keep jumping from one umbrella to another umbrella. Okay, and I'll explain what colors I need. But like I said, feel free to add your own colors. It's your painting. It's your umbrella. So enjoy. Okay. I'm going to get started with this one. Now, if you see, it has nice rose pink here. I'm going to take a bit of orange and mix into that rose. It has to be light. And 
I'm just going to give a nice wash here. When I say wash, it just means applying a nice thin layer of paint as smooth as possible. Okay. Because I am going to come back and add some paint here. And you can see it's a bigger shape, so I am using a big um, brush here to cover as much as area as possible. Okay. So here you go. I just got some base here. I'm going to let it dry. <clears throat> Next, let's go to, we can also do this one because we still have that pink kind of orange mixture here. I'm going to do the same thing. A little bit of pink and orange mixed. When I say mix, I'm just not going very hard on the mixture. I'm just going to keep it very spontaneous this is a very very dynamic uh, kind of painting you can just pick your colors and just have fun with it a little bit of pink here a little bit of orange there just have fun see I think umbrellas are very fascinating. I was very fascinated with umbrellas as a kid. Uh, back in India, we had a whole season of rain, the monsoon. So we always used umbrellas whenever we went out. And those umbrellas, they were really, really bad. They did not last much. They would fly away. It was just very fascinating. Okay. <clears throat> I'll wait for two minutes and then continue. <clears throat> Excuse me. To another shape. Next, maybe I can go for orange. Again, keep it really light because, hey, the pink next to it has to be dark. Next, I'm going to come to this left hand side yellow orange kind of umbrella. It's really pale and light. And if some color ends up going to the other umbrellas, it's fine. Because remember, the way these umbrellas are arranged, they're kind of overlapping. And some of the color 
of that particular umbrella is reflecting on some other umbrella that is adjacent to it. Pink is reflecting on orange, orange is reflecting on blue, blue is reflecting again purple, green is reflecting on blue. So all those things are actually together. So it's okay if some of the colors run into each other uh, umbrella, umbrella next to it. Because remember, we're going to add all these outlines that will give shape to the umbrella structure. Next, what can we do? Well, why not go for a blue one? I am going to go a little thicker or I would say more paint for this one because I know it's a very, very dark umbrella and I'll need a lot of paint anyways. So why not start right away? If you make a mistake, no problem. You can always go back and correct it. But for right now, don't don't just bother. It's okay. It's just paint running into other paints. Excuse me. I know right now there's no structure in this painting. It all seems like jumbled up, which is fine. We can go to this one again, the lower left one, the pink one. It has got purple spinks. So, yeah, I can take some red, get started. Add some pink. See, I'm just giving a base right now. They're really not actually painting, painting anything. As I come down, I'm just going to run some water, keeping it really light. See, barely any paint. I'm just sweeping some water near that area. Because I wanted light. As I go on top, I can add some color. See if you can add some purple. I'm adding some purple here. And it's just, I'm just playing with color right now, honestly. There is no structure, and that's okay. Almost like how I'm playing in the rain. Right? Okay. That's not bad. Looks good. I'll give you guys like two, three minutes to catch up. I think it did mess up in some place. This was not supposed to be peach when pink. It's supposed to be blue, but that's okay. I 
That's okay. Next, we will go for the green one. So if you have on your palette, go for some green. Also keep some brown ready. Green is almost like very, just like how you have on leaves. Nice bottle green. Continue to put that green wherever it belongs. Here you can see some browns are here. I can add some brown. Okay, so that's another one. <clears throat> so you get a kind of get the idea of how to approach this. I'm putting all the lights first and then I'm going to add layers. So even if you don't complete all the umbrellas, you know how to go about it and finish the painting. Right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Next, we'll do the last blue. And I'll just wait for two more minutes for that. Okay, so we can start with the blues. Okay. All right, so we almost got like the first layers of the painting in. <clears throat> 
now we all have to do is just take more paint and add it layer by layer, see which one is dry. Obviously, I started this one first. This is quite dry. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to definitely start with this one. Then, yeah, just go layer by layer. Right now, they're quite wet. But you get the point how we're going to add layers, OK? OK, let's let it dry for two more minutes, and then we'll get started. Just do some clean up till then. Pick some paints on the palette so that I have enough paint when I start to paint. Whatever it is, your pinks, your reds. Excuse me. And even when you paint each umbrella, just watch. This is lighter and this side is darker. So not every area can have the same amount of paint. So be careful, go slow and keep comparing the edges and sides. <clears throat> Actually, I think this was the first one we started. What does this mean? It's more dry. Okay, we can start anything. Okay, so we're gonna get started. I'm just going to apply some really nice thin paint. And you can keep adding some reds or orange or whatever you see. In here, you can see, you can just carve out these shapes. I think towards the corner, they're more darker. That's something I am observing. Take your time and observe how they are actually behaving as you <clears throat> go in towards the umbrella or coming out. I do see some nice, beautiful reds here.
here <clears throat> we finish one part and add more paint wherever you feel Okay, I think it should stop because it's bleeding into other layers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Once this dries, we'll go and do the outline just to show that it's an umbrella. Okay. Next, where can we go? We can definitely go to these areas. This is completely dry. These are quite wet. So just see where it's dry and you can approach. Here I can add a little bit more orange. I can take some liberty to add some orange here. Same with this. A little bit of more liberty on the top. And here we can move on. I see beautiful oranges and again, pinks and some purples. Just follow a shape here. Everything is a shape. Take some red here in the end or some orange. Yeah, I like that color, okay. And here again, a bit of extra red. Excuse me. A bit too dark. So keep the red as it is. Okay. And wherever I see some hard lines here, I'm just going to take some moist brush and just blend it in gently. Okay, so this part is done. This is dark. This is quite wet. We can go to the blue one, but I'll have to still wait a bit. So let's wait. In the meanwhile, this is dry. <clears throat> I'll show you how to do the outline. So outlines, again, if you see carefully, they're not black or they're not brown. It has some color that is reflecting from the umbrella as well. So for this one, I think I'll stick to a bit of brown, dark color, but definitely not black. See that? Because it's not black.
can mix up a little bit of some other color in that, but don't uh, try to just make it all black. Okay, so that that one got one shape. Mm. And this is dry, so I can give this a bit of shape. Okay. Next, we can come here and add some really dark blues. I'm going to take this purple bluish mixture. It's with Prussian blue. Really nice and dark, beautiful color. And I wanted to keep it really dark because it is dark. Okay, we want it to really pop out. I accidentally mix green into this, but that's okay. You can see that it is a nice, really nice dark area. See now this area is popping, <clears throat> right? It's getting structure. Something is behind, something is front. Things that are in front of you are usually darker, brighter. Things that are behind, like if you see, a, if you're standing at a very beautiful scenic place, you'll see the mountains that are behind are really faded and light and also has less detail. You you will hardly able to see the exact shape. It's just a very <clears throat> hazy um, shape. But the mountain is in front of you exactly, you know exactly the structure of it. That's how nature is. Excuse me. It's important to make those observations. So we can go actually here again and pick up all the other same pinks and purples and reds and oranges and fill up this area and again um, see how dark or light you want to go this is a very very soothing painting if you see because you are just playing with so much color here and you can just make it your own you can add some water you can remove some water and everything will give you like a very beautiful hue and that's why i wanted everyone to experiment this painting it's just got so much you can play with while it's painted you can add some purples here see it's just all going to blend and make all these beautiful transitions of color. That you cannot get by mixing in a palette. You mix it on paper, just like this. Take color and take another color next to it and just blend it. Wherever you can find, add some reds. Like this place needs 
ton of red. And see, and all I'm doing is just following a shape and just filling it with this beautiful red. And don't worry if it, like I said, if it bleeds into some other area, it's okay. Good, so I think this is coming together. And if I need any more adjustments, I'm going to go back and add some color. With a painting like this, you'll probably go back and make some adjustments because of how some umbrellas are in the front and some umbrellas are at the back and some need to be dark and some need to be light. So that's the only reason, but otherwise, like I said, play with it. So we're done with this. Before we move on to the other one, I want to make the outline of this umbrella. And I'm going to pick maybe purple or pink mixed. And I can also change my brush to a thin brush just for more control. So I'll take some pink and some purple mixed together, a little thicker because I want nice thick paint. I don't want a very runny, runny paint. I'm outlining and I need some structure. And here you go. If it's too dry, put some water. If it's too runny, add some paint. If it's too dry, I need some water. Switch colors in between, maybe add a little bit of brown here and there. Even red, actually. Because there's so much color that's reflecting from other umbrellas. It's not really black. Okay, and I did lose a spot here. That's okay. We'll just make it up for it. But you can see that now it's getting some structure. Okay, I know we still have to do the uh, holder here, the umbrella holder. Okay, this is I think good for now for this area. If I go here, I can add some here as well.
is this uh, holder is again almost like brown but you know i don't want to use just a brown there it is light and it has a really dark shadow on that that's important that extends to the shape here and you can see now the adjacent of it is quite light so i need to add some pink here i'm going to readjust by adding some color Coming to this blue one here, again, not a very different way to paint. We do the same thing. Take your blues. And I'm going to go for the dark areas now. I guess I need a little more dark blue here. It's too dark. Follow the shape again, leaving the light areas. That will give you the direction how to move. And if you want to know what those light areas are, well, it's the light actually. The light is falling there, and that's why those areas are light. That's easy way to remember wherever there is light, things are lighter. Wherever it's, it's dark, it's probably a shadow area or not enough light. Okay. Definitely need some shapes here. We'll add that. But I want to show you guys completing the umbrella here with the greens. Very important because you can always add the darker areas to define the umbrella. Excuse me. Okay, I'll have two more minutes and then we'll continue. We're almost done, but like I said, if we cannot finish, you guys already have the technique how to finish this. Uh, talking about these empty shapes here, they're kind of very, very pale blue. So if you see, I can add a bit of blue here. Or you can. No, not really white. It is kind of blue, but very pale, very light. Okay. Now my 
intention for this last ramilera is to be really dark so i'm going to keep a nice mix of green ready and a nice mix of some prussian blue or something to make that green even more darker okay so keep that mixture ready in your palette with lots of water lots of paint if you have enough paint on your palette you can move very quickly and that gives you a lot of freedom so we'll start in a minute while this is already wet i'm going to take advantage of the wetness here take this blue and a little bit of green mixture and go bold on some of the areas with a nice nice thick paint and see there is some blue here reflecting from the blue umbrella adjacent to this green umbrella in case you're wondering where did the blue come from they're all from the area around it nothing is imaginary here it's all observation how you see things this blue is coming here that's why some of the parts of the umbrella have blue i can go here Add some browns while it's wet so that they'll always mingle all of this brown turn into a little dirty green. It's okay. Yes, it's not the right brown I used, but I should have. I used burnt sienna. I'm not sure why it's turning into a very dirty green. That's okay. The point is to give some warm colors next to it. And that's what I'm just trying. I'm not really trying to match every single color here. And you can see here, so nice and dark. Not enough dark here, add some more. I think I'll need another layer, but 
Not right now. I think I need to, to dry. Because right now it's just scooping away all the color that is beneath it. Yeah, just wait for it. Okay, so you got this as well. Got a really nice dark green. And now we just left with. I'll show one more outlining here and the rest you can do. Okay, because we're almost almost done. So we'll take about five minutes or seven minutes more. And be done. I am taking some red here to outline some of these here. I need it to be a little dark. Maybe you can add some blue to the red. I can take some more dark blue and complete this area. Okay, since I have about five more minutes, I can take some pink and purple again, mix it up, finish these areas. Almost done. This area is again, whatever is in the umbrella actually, the pinkish thing with some little dark areas. Okay. And Okay. So we're done with this area too. We just have this one left, but it's too wet to even bother. So I'll leave, leave this part and not complete, which I know you guys can finish it. But overall, I hope you get the concept of how you paint these transparent layers by layering one layer of another. And again, you can add some more colors here. Just, you know, fix this a little bit, blend it in things like that. So overall, I hope you get the idea how to paint such colorful objects. Right. 
and of course when it dries you can go back and add some more if you like make your adjustments but overall i hope you guys enjoyed this uh, painting today i thoroughly enjoyed i think this is a very nice subject i'm going to paint some more different kinds of this kind of this uh, umbrellas um, never thought it was it would be this fun so send me your paintings i love to see that i still get a lot of paintings every week people finish it go back watch the video on the youtube the recorded version and they send me um the paintings for critique and i will give you a written critique uh, that's my promise i will reply to your mail and help you out if you want to make any changes so definitely definitely email me tag me on facebook instagram whatever you like but definitely uh, send in your work because uh, yeah the best way to improve is to get a feedback so hope you guys enjoyed this um, on a rainy day i just want to sorry i got some of these chats um a little bit late but someone said the picture on the screen is too limited and can't see the palette. Mm -hmm. You can only see the reference picture. Uh, you're right. Um, I think because I use uh, my phone, it gives me a very small view of how much I can put into the thing. I'll try right. to fix that next time. Uh, but it's just, uh, I've tried to really change that. But yes, I do agree. The palette helps because I want to. I know everybody wants to see the color mixing, so I'll try that next time if I can fit it into it. Uh, maybe change the angle or something. But I'm sorry if you couldn't see the palette. But yeah, it I is tried. really frustrating with WebEx that they only show that little portion. And we've called WebEx actually to see if even I can get my block off the screen to make more room. But right. we do have this limitation. I'm so sorry about that. I, I hope it didn't deter you from um, being able to enjoy the exercise too much. Yeah, I know. I know. I understand. It's it's a valid, it's a valid concern. Yeah. But thank you, Mika. This was such a fun thing to do on a rainy day, and the picture was just perfect. I know. <laughs> I just want to get like a pair of wellies and take a colorful umbrella and go splash in the puddles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feel free. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all so much for joining us. Amiga will be back in another two weeks on, just looking up the date here, Friday, yes. February 18th at four o'clock. Right. And what are we going to paint then, Amiga? Uh, I'll have to check. Uh, what's the color, right? Yes, I think it's the caterpillar. Yeah. yeah. It's the caterpillar. So yes, caterpillar would be fun. Uh, it's going to be this image, everyone. So yes, it'll be online uh, well in advance on the library website. Go ahead and finish your drawing and we'll have a lot of fun with this one. All right. Thank you all again for attending. Hope to see you next time. Bye.